Ron, it's so lovely to be here. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about when you started the gallery and perhaps why you started the gallery. Um, I used to work for another gallery and um, I, I wanted to have my own style of artwork. I wanted to, I wanted to have a different approach to the, to the way that you work with the artist. I wanted more of a partnership, you know, where you, and create friendships. And yeah, I just, I just wanted my own vision you know, my own kind of music. And I was just noticing that um, on the website there's like 54 artists that mm -hmm. you work with and I was just thinking there must be some really special relationships that are built up. I, like I say, I, I, think, I think what I'm interested in is, I'm, I'm not interested in a, a one night stand, you know, <laughs> it's a funny way of putting it, but I'm more interested in a, a long term love affair. And um, the, the thing is that most of my artists are friends, you know, I've got about 20 that exhibit and a lot of the other artists, you know, I might only get two or three pieces a year from them, but I've known them for a long time and, you know, um, uh, they just, to me, they add, add value to the gallery and, and to my life, you know, mm. to my enjoyment. And a lot of painters, like is, is painting one of your loves? I love painting, yeah <laughs> it, is, it is my love, you know, although I'm starting to look at sculpture now but mm. uh, I love paintings, yeah, yeah. And this gallery, there's sort of a cluster of galleries in Cuba Street but this is different in that it's, it's kind of in the Golden Mile, isn't it? Yeah, I mean when I first started there was about four or five galleries in this area, so I'm sort of the last one standing. <laughs> um, I love it because we, 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 we're, we're close to people that need to seek refuge during the day. They turn around and, you know, they, they, they've had it. You can see them physically relax when they walk in and uh, we get to know them. So it's, it's a joy to have that regular contact. It really is such a beautiful space, it's magnificent. Thank and you. I was just thinking like, um, we've just sort of come out from lockdown and I think that you sort of tried to recreate some of that space using social media with your... Yeah, when, when lockdown happened, I, I didn't want to turn around and um, I didn't want to try and sell online. I know it sounds counterintuitive, <laughs> but I wanted to keep in touch with my artists. I wanted to keep in touch with, with my clients and I thought by asking the artist to turn around and, and send me some photos and let me know how they feel, I could pass that on. And of course at the end of it, unplanned, I decided, you know, I had a show of what they produced, but to me it was just a great way of keeping in touch. Yeah, I love it, I love it. And I mean, gosh, these magnificent works by Pierre. Um, when did you first meet her and start oh, exhibiting her? Pierre was, I, I don't know, it would, would have been uh, 15 years ago. I was always a fan. I was a fan before I started representing her. Um, she's one of my favourite artists because mm. she's had so many uh, unique experiences and she's, uh, she's adamant that she'll paint what she wants to paint. Uh, she doesn't worry about trends or fashion. She's a great colourist, beautiful brushwork. Um, j just a joy, just an absolute joy. And do you think that's what makes her work distinctive, like yeah. especially in New Zealand, eh? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think because she has that, she she's had so much experience overseas, internationally, it, it, uh, it, it reflects in her work. But it's great that she, you know, she's in New Zealand and she's um, bringing it to us. You know, she's unlike any other artist, I think, in New Zealand. Yeah, it's quite incredible. And the work that we're going to talk with her about, um, that's, what, um, what is it about that work that you really wanted to, because I remember you saying you really wanted to show it. Look, when, it, when I first saw it, I, I said to Pierre, I really, really want to show this work, and she said, it's not for sale. And I said, I don't care, I really want to show it. I mean, I just, you know, she, uh, even though I'm a dealer gallery, it's, that's, I mean, my passion's first and foremost about the artwork, you know, the rest follows. And it was a series she did in 1989 and only ever exhibited in Moscow. And I, I think she was the first Westerner to exhibit in, in Moscow or in Russia since 1917. But I just love the work. I mean, the whole, the expression of the work, it's just beautiful, the whole story. Yeah, it's magnificent. Thank you so much, Ron. Thank it's you. so nice to be here. Thank Cheers. you. Off we go. Yes, let's go. And so, 
What do you want to ask me? I'm really interested in the story behind these paintings. Like, they're amazing. What, what do you want to tell me about them? I want to tell you that I love them and I'm never going to sell them and I'm never going, they must never be separated. And there used to be one or two more of them um, that, ha that have sort of somehow wandered off and, but never been given back to me, that sort of thing. And they were done while, while I was on leave with my husband John um, from Moscow. And uh, it's a story really of the of someone who has uh, a disastrous event in their life. Why are you laughing? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's dreadful to have a disastrous sorry. event, sorry. but however, he gets over it. Mm. And um, it's really the story of uh, taking things on the chin and uh, making the best, best of what happens to you. And uh, you'll see in the end that I didn't know how to I, I sort of didn't know how to finish it off because I didn't want to do it, try to do a Fra Angelico or something like that. And at the time I was in Moscow, so they, they jolly well ended up in icons. Mm -hmm. mm. So There's a beautiful, um, like I'm interested in the bowl. Where, where did the bowl Well, well the from? bowl's everywhere. Did you, did you look at the uh, Anzac there? Yeah. Yes. Well, well, the bull is as old as civilization. Think of the Minotaur, and uh, there's the bull's always somewhere. Uh, in, in my background thinking, for example, in the uh, Anzac Bay of Mariah Kakahu, he, he's not so much interested, really, in the uh, mechanics of the story, but he's just there eating his... Oh, but we must come back to this story. Because so, yeah, this bull in particular, you saw from a train, eh? Yeah, yes. But the little backyards of tables and things going on and chooks pecking and that sort of thing. And um, so th that, that's how this st started, among other sort of weird things going on my, in my head about stories and painting and that sort of thing. And um, so the, it starts off because it's the story mm. of the life of someone and what happens to him. And it starts off with him complaining and saying, Destiny, why didn't you leave us alone? We were perfectly all right. And, um, and here begins the sad story of Luigi, pray for us. Because, because the whole sort of religious thing of the Italian background is, is about coping with destiny and supported by ritual and everyday ordinary things, but in, in, in an atmosphere of such marvelous background and culture that the subjects of the story are not really aware of. Mm. They just get on with their life. And I remember the undertakers at this funeral we went into, just to get out of the heat at midday, really. <laughs> and uh, they, they were very ordinary people and uh, great displays of sort of, uh, dare I say, working class grief and shrieks and undertakers, not really uh, interested in the drama of the thing, but up above them, we had this marvelous Renaissance ceiling and. And there was the whole of everything Italy is about, the whole of civilization from ancient times in, in Italy up to here, and these people wailing and shrieking, and that's that's how this story came. And um, I, Ron told me. I hope you don't mind. Ron told me that you sketch a lot. Yes, I do. Yeah, and I wonder a little bit about. The, the move from sketches to these, like, because they're, they're quite... Pro large. Probably, probably um, the, the spirit of the story is mm. all there, and I've got hundreds and dozens of sketches, and who knows which book they're in, they're everywhere. Um, but I, I don't copy from sketches, but the sketches give me the impetus to the next part of the story. 
Yeah. And, um, and what, what it runs all through it are the wonderful Italian death notices, which are, are like a sort of literature of their own. Mm. I, I, I love those. And one of your ancestors, eh? one of your Well, well uh, the, you know how people lie in state and there's a, f a photograph of them. Mm. Well, uh, one of my cousins, or second cousins, or third cousins, who knows, and the, all those families, he had his own sort of studio somewhere, so I put him in it too. So, and, and the uh, poor woman, Clara, she's so upset. She's, she says, how the hell am I going to cope with this? So here, here it says, Angosha di Clara, Clara's anguish at the sight of the deer, B-I-E-R. Non avete paura di te, cavallo. Don't be frightened, says the horse. I'm here, I'll take you to the cemetery. Oh. And when my brother and I were small, we used to go with our parents on, on holiday to, the, to the, a village where a lot of this happened in my mind. And we used to go down to the little village church and climb up, scuff, scuff the toes of our shoes, and look into this sort of charnel house beside the local church. And there were skulls on shelves, and we loved to see all that. And it's all in here. So there, there was a little, uh, not, not so little, a sort of a, a beer for trundling the mm. dead body off to the cemetery. And so, so it's here too. And, and the, the horse having said, I'll help you to the cemetery, here he comes and he takes Luigi and those are Luigi's feet. Your horses are amazing. Good. I love all your horses, <laughs> they're so great. Good. Thank you so much. Oh. That was wonderful.